Fellow explorers, I often get a lot of questions about Chris what camera were you using to make that video? What microphone did you use? I see you had a clip-on microphone. There was a gimbal. What was it? And so in this video, I'm going to share with you all of those things so you can see what gear I decided to take with me on my travel videos. And one of the biggest challenges when picking equipment to take for making travel videos is it has to be small enough, light enough, that you can carry it anywhere in your bag. And so since this video is about what is in my travel bag first, let's start with the bag. This is the bag that you see in all of my videos. This is the Pack Safe LS250. Actually, I have them in a few different sizes. That's the 250. This one is the 150. You can see this one's a little bit smaller. And I've got them in multiple colors too. I've also got them in brown. This is the 250 in brown. But what do I like about this bag? Well, in addition to having lots of room in it to put cameras and lots of different pocket, like internal pockets so I can separate the cameras from things. It's also an anti-theft bag. It's got these places you can clip in the zippers and this is made of metal so you can't slash it. But I also love the two pockets on either side. One is great for carrying an umbrella and the second one is great for getting a drink because traveling around, I at least get thirsty. I will drink this later. Okay, now what are all the cameras and stuff that I keep in there? I'm going to talk about cameras. I'm going to talk about microphones. I'm going to talk about gimbals. I'm going to talk about drones. I'm going to talk about my main camera, my special purpose cameras, and that's all the stuff right behind me right here that we're going to be going through. So first, I want to start with my main camera, this camera right here. This is the camera I use to shoot most of my travel videos. This is the Sony FDR AX53. It has a flip out screen, which makes it really good for vlogging because I can look in the screen as I shoot. There you can see my live stream system there. Oh, and my, my light reflecting off that. Yeah, it's probably a little bit blurry and it's probably upside down as it is like that. Now, the other thing I like about this camera is it has a stabilized lens inside the camera. This lens right here, it's actually like a gimbal. So you can see when I move the camera fast, it actually responds slower. So if we're kind of bouncing around with this, this lens is stabilized in a bunch of different axes. The other thing I really like about this camera is I like the Sony wireless microphone system. This thing that you see blinking up here, this is the receiver for the Sony ECM W1M microphone, which then connects to this little guy, which is the transmitter. This is what sometimes you see clipped on my shirt like this, though most of the time you actually, uh, it's actually clipped on my bag strap like this right here and when it's black you probably barely even notice it. Uh, this runs on a AAA battery. This receiver gets powered by the camera and so I've only got one thing I need to turn on which is just one less step to not getting audio. One of the biggest problems with doing travel videos is getting good audio because places are noisy and so it's really key to have a wireless microphone uh, and most wireless microphones have like you have to turn on the receiver and the transmitter and then you have to connect the receiver to the camera with another cable. There's just so many things that could go wrong. I love how this eliminates all of that. The other thing I like about this a camcorder, sometimes people call it a dad cam, big batteries in it. These batteries can last for two or three hours. Uh, and I will carry a whole grip of other batteries with me so I can power this for days without having to charge for when you're traveling. Sometimes it's not easy to get a charge and if your batteries run out, well then you can't do any more shooting. So batteries are super key and like DSLRs, things like that, small batteries, they don't last a long time. So I love the long run time. The one con with this camera is the colors coming out of the camera are not fantastic. Uh, so in order to make the edited videos, I always uh, increase the saturation, increase the contrast, because what comes out of the camera looks a little blah. So I'm just telling you that in case you're considering this one for yourself, you will need to do some post-processing and it's not super good right out of the camera. And I don't just actually have one of these 
I have two of these because if I go on important shoots, then I want to make sure I've always got a backup in case something happens to the main one. And then what is this thing on? It is on the Joby Gorillapod 5K. It's got the ball head attachment on it. It's got these flexible legs. And so this is good for just giving it some distance from me if I'm doing um, my personal vlogging style. If OC Girl's with me, then we don't use the Gorillapod because then she holds it. But if I'm holding it, it's not quite wide enough that I can hand hold it and get a good shot. I need to I need to put this on it and get it just a little farther away. But I absolutely love uh, this camera. And so for my videos that people say, Chris, the video quality looks really great. It was probably out of one of these two Sony dad cam cameras. Now, <clears throat> it's not the only camera I use. I use a lot of other cameras. And I'm gonna turn off this microphone so the battery doesn't run out. Uh, I use a lot of cameras for other special purpose applications. Um, and before I go on to the other cameras that I use for my walking tours, for my hotel reviews, I want to dive into the few of the questions I see on the live stream. Uh, Points Traveler asks if my YouTube revenue pays for all this gear. That is what my YouTube AdSense revenue goes to. And people say, Chris, you must, you must make a lot of money on AdSense. Let me tell you this stuff. This stuff really adds up in price really quite quickly. Uh, and so it's really nice to have that AdSense revenue to actually go to support all this gear to make the best videos for all of you. So I thank you for watching. I thank you for watching those ads uh, to help get the gear to then make more videos. So uh, thank you. Um, oh, by the way, uh, for all the item numbers, um, there are links in the description. Uh, if you wanna just check out more details from Amazon, those are affiliate links. So I earn like a super small half percent commission or something if you decide to buy through those links, um, but it really helps the channel and it'll help me buy even better equipment to make better videos for y'all. Uh, Alex says, uh, speaking of Sony, I'm tempted to switch to one of their DSLRs, quite impressed coming from a lifelong Canon user. I, uh, before, diving really into Sony, I also used Canons. I've got a whole bunch of other older cameras I'm not showing you, this is my current gear, um, but I just like the Sony experience better and the Sony ecosystem better than the Canon ecosystem. Uh, and then Janet says, how much does that Sony camera cost? I think today this camera's about $800. Um, when it was new, it was more in the mid thousands price range, but I would say it's reasonably priced for a good quality camera. Um, since this one's a bit older, you can get it uh, cheaper. Points Traveler asked if the TSA ever questions you regarding your excessive camera electronic equipment. So uh, I don't have my backpack here that I, I put this all in, but what I will do is I'll have some cameras in this bag. I've got some of the equipment in my backpack and then I have a whole bag full of cables. And so I take each one of those out um, separately and put them in bins separately so that when it goes to the X-ray machine, there's not one that's just full of stuff. Because yes, when I would have the backpack that was full of all of it, I would get the TSA agents that would, uh, like their mind would boggle. And they're like, sir, your backpack looks like a Best Buy shelf. Uh, probably because it is a Best Buy shelf. Um, okay, now let me go on to my walking tour gear. I see a few more questions and I'll hit those after we talk to the walking tour gear. Okay, so when I do my walking tours, um, I actually want a more stable experience than this provides. Even though it has a gimbal in it, I want a better gimbal. And so for the walking tours, I use the DJI OM4 gimbal. Chris, this isn't a camera. I thought you were talking about cameras. Uh, the camera that I use is the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra. And on this gimbal, it just clips on, uh, let me do this the right way. It just clip, and let me do it so you can see it. So what I like about this gimbal, there's this nice clip. You can actually, it's magnetic. And so this piece comes on and comes off. So you can remove that piece and you can actually clip this on to the phone. And then once you've got that clip all situated like that on the phone, then you just line up the little tab on this with the little tab on that. And you put it right there. And then we turn it on. And then we have a gimbal 
that makes for very steady video. So this is what I use when I've got my walking tours. This is the camera and you can see as I move this around in different angles, cause it's powered, you turn it on to do this. Uh, it keeps it very steady. It can go, uh, you can like angle it up. There's like a little um, trigger on here to angle it up or to angle it down. Now, for me, because I do all of my audio from my walking tours on location, I need a microphone. Uh, so this uh, pack here, these are the microphones that I generally use for my walking tours. This is the Rode Video, this is the Rode Wireless Go 2 is what it's called. And it comes with three, three of these little things in here, uh, one of them <laughs> this one right here is the receiver and these two are microphones. These are wireless microphones. So you'll see one just has a little windscreen on it. The others don't, but you can see that's the microphone right there. This is what I'll have clipped on my uh, shirt or I'll have that clipped on my bag. And then it transmits to this receiver. Chris, how does that receiver get into your phone? There is a USB cable right here, a USB-C cable that plugs right into the phone just like that. And then that connects right into the uh, base of the receiver right like this. Chris, how do you, what do you how, does, how, does, how does this work? This doesn't work very well. I actually have another mount that I put on the bottom of this gimbal that then I can clip this receiver right onto the bottom of it. And so yes, I've got this kind of funky wire going around when I walk, but this way I get the wireless audio close up to my mouth, right into the phone over USB-C, so there's no analog conversion and it sounds pretty good. Now, sometimes uh, I actually don't like to use my fanciest phone, this one, my S22 Ultra. Why? Because that's actually my phone that I use for like Google Maps and all those sorts of things. So I have my old phone, my S21 Ultra right here uh, that I will often be using this because I think the video from the S21 Ultra is almost just as good as the S22 Ultra. So I use these kind of interchangeably for the walking tours. Often the S21 now more in the S22 just so that I've got one to record with. Um, I did recently get a new microphone. This is the DJI mic system. The DJI mic system comes in this neat charging case. And what's cool about the DJI mic system, these, these little guys right here, these are the microphones, just like on the road system. And then this is the receiver. But what's neat about the receiver is that the receiver actually has a connector that goes on it um, like this, if I can put it on correctly. Maybe it goes on this way. All right, there we go. It has this little, uh, you can either put the USB-C connector or the iPhone connector on it, and then you can just attach it to your phone or your device and so now that's the receiver right there and it doesn't have a cable that goes off of it so i just got this one a few days ago i haven't used it yet i'll give you my report but if you're looking for a solution that plugs right into the phone that's a pretty good one with no cable to the wireless receiver and it's got that neat charging case so this case charges all the things. You don't have to connect it with three different wires, which I think is pretty neat. But related to charging, because the wireless walking, the mobile walking tours, they take a lot of power. I also carry uh, like a big Samsung 10,000 um, milliamp power bank so that between shoots, I can charge the camera. Now, the gimbal can charge the camera too, but I don't want to waste the power from the gimbal to charge my phone because I want the gimbal to be charged up as well. All right. Um, <clears throat> oh, one other tripod that I've, um, in addition to the Gorillapod that I've purchased that I actually don't love is this thing called the SwitchPod. This thing is designed to be 
handheld like this to put your camera on to hold it far away and then you can open it up like this it's built super sturdy it's made of metal but i actually don't like the metal and the sturdiness because it like scratches my stuff up when it's in the bag and it's not as easy to bend as the gorilla pod to put in my bag so i find i almost never travel with this but that's sort of what it is in this game is it's like let me check this out does it work it's new is it better i don't know so i'll let you know whether the dji mic is better than the Rode Wireless 2 goes. Um, okay, so when I'm in a really noisy environment, then I need to, these little microphones are garbage. And so when I'm in a really noisy environment, I have this headset that you've probably seen me wear in some of my live streams. It is the Audio-Technica BPH S2S XLR headset. Again, those model numbers and names are in the description of the video. Um, but because it has an XLR interface, which is a big fat cable, those don't plug into phones. And so then I've got this Zoom H. This one's the H4. And this is the Zoom H6 XLR recorder, which has these big fat connectors on the side. I'll run the XLR microphone connector into this. And then I've got a um, mini headphone to USB-C connector that then plugs into the phone. I can also record the audio, which I do sometimes directly onto this because it is designed as an audio recorder. If I do that, then I have to line them up in post-production. It's easier if I can just record directly to the phone, but I always record here, so I've got a backup. I've got one recording here, and I've got one recording on the phone. It's so one of the things I've learned making travel videos is really good to have backups, 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 backups. Right. Um, Points Traveler says, I would really love to see another live stream uh, walking tour soon. I will consider that, Points Traveler. I need to find a place that has good internet bandwidth to do that. Because that's the problem doing the walking tours is when the cell phone bandwidth is sad, then the video is sad. But when I'm out and about, I will consider that. Uh, Samurai says, it doesn't need to be expensive, but which tripod should I get? Uh, the, all of the tripods that I use are from the company Manfrotto. It's an Italian company. Uh, anything you get from Manfrotto would be good. So I would recommend that you kind of look into, look into their line of tripods. One thing I think you want to think about when you're doing video is do you need a, a video head, which um, usually has like a long arm. And if you're doing like wedding videos, something like that, and you want to make very precise movements you might need that video head uh, if you are just shooting yourself then in fact the the ball head like this which just has a, a knob that you loosen and then you can turn it is often a bit more flexible um, but Manfrotto has a line of tripods called the B free B E F R E E I like those uh, they're pretty good travel tripods that's what I take when we travel and when I put the tripods up here at home I've got other more substantial Manfrotto tripods um, all right, uh, and Kangas Conrad says I'm planning on doing a couple walking tours. I'm in Europe this summer taking notes. Very cool, Kangas Conrad. Uh, yeah, and so like all these things, the the DJI OM4 gimbal, the microphones, they're all stuff that I pack down so that they're just in the bag. And then when I'm at the destination, I just find a flat surface and I put it all together um, because walking around with this for a long time can look really obnoxious. And so I try not to call more attention to myself than I need to by having these big gimbals out. And you might be saying, Chris, why don't, why do you use these phones? Why don't you use a more professional camera on a more professional gimbal? They're just too big. They're just too heavy. It takes too long to balance cameras on gimbals when you're out traveling. And it's, just, it's time I, I frankly don't want to spend because I want to either be recording more content or enjoying the destination. And so that's what I like about the cell phone gimbals is there's no balancing required. You just snap the camera on and it, and it works. It does have a like an auto calibration feature that if it's kind of wonky and you didn't put it on straight, it will calibrate it. It takes like a minute after you put it on and then it's magically balanced. If you've never used a gimbal, you may have no idea what I'm talking about, but if you've used a gimbal before and you have to adjust all these sliders to adjust for the weight and the balance and the lens, it can take forever. Um, yeah, Tommy says, uh, I have a little bit of everything. I do have a little bit of everything. Uh, and Kathy says, um, will our phone be good enough for pics or should we get a better camera uh, or video? Uh, Kathy, it depends on what phone you have. If you have, um, you know, one of the flagship Samsungs, Google Pixels, they take uh, pretty good photos. iPhones take pretty good photos. 
for photos, uh, though, we have this one right here, the Sony ZV-1. This one also does videos, um, but it takes better photos because it has a just a better lens and better glass. You're not going to be able to get the same quality of a photo in something this small because the glass is so small as something that actually has a real lens on it. So um, the Sony ZV-1 is good for photos and video, uh, though I do find sometimes it can be, the pictures can be a little bit bright. Um, when we're taking like a thumbnail picture, we might take it with the ZV-1. Sometimes we take it with the phone. Uh, but as compared to like a two generation old phone, then the ZV-1 would be uh, better. Now, this ZV-1 here, this little tripod that I have on it, it's the vlogging kit. And so this actually, you can uh, take photos just by pushing these buttons on here. I don't have a battery in this, so it's not turned on right now, but when it is turned on, then you can control all the features of the camera by holding this tripod, which is kind of cool. It has a, if you want to do any vlogging, number one thing is a, a, a flip out screen. Not all cameras have a screen that you can see yourself on. So that would be the number one feature I'd consider looking for. And then if you are vlogging, the um, wideness of the lens is important. And so that's why this handle is important for the ZV-1 is in order to do the self vlog, I need to be able to get it far enough away from me and I need that little like handle extension to do that. But this is a pretty good camera too. Uh, Trip Hex DC says, um, <clears throat> every time someone hands me a regular camera, uh, it takes worse photos than the newest Samsung or iPhone. And so, uh, Rob, thanks for joining today. I think that's a great point. And so phones, the new phone, if you have a new phone, the amount of software processing that those phones do to take amazing pictures are truly amazing. They're phenomenal. Uh, and so most of the regular cameras, people probably hand rob or things that are four or five years old, which then end up not taking really great pictures. The other thing is if you might have a professional photo camera, but if you don't know how to use it and you don't know how to set all the settings, then it's not gonna take great photos either. And so that's a great thing about phones is they just they just take great photos because uh, that's what they're designed to do. They're designed to just uh, click a button. Um, and uh, John says phones have been pretty good lately for pretty much anything audio video. Pretty good is the word that I'll use. I mean, obviously I still carry these cam Sony camcorders for a reason because they do have higher quality video than the phone does because they have more glass in them because uh, the lenses are better and the sensors are better, but phones are pretty good. And I think, Kathy, if it's if it's just for you, you can do that, or you could get one of these small, the ZV-1s or something like that, because it's just, it's small, and so it's easy to carry around with you. I think that's, again, this is all about travel gear, and I think travel gear, small is really important, so you can keep it in your purse, you can keep it in your pocket. The huge cameras, if you can't carry them with you, are useless when you're traveling. All right, I'm thirsty. This is the drink that I had earlier, uh, out of my, out of my bag that I was showing you, the LS250. I don't know if I mentioned it, but if you want to see more on this bag, I do have a whole video review on this bag that I carry all this stuff in. Uh, that's linked up in the description if you want to take a look at that review afterwards. But let's check out this lemon soda, this Japanese lemon soda. Lemon soda is a popular flavor of soda in Japan, which I find lemon soda is not a popular flavor of soda in the U.S. Lemon lime is Sprite 7-Up, but it's interesting to see all the Japanese brands of just lemon soda. It's definitely lemony. It's definitely le it tastes like maybe a, like a lemon meringue pie in a soda. Um, yeah, this is another one too. Uh, Rob says, someone recently had a pro camera on my tour but didn't have a zoomable lens so Abe Lincoln's head was cut off in their family photo. That's another one where when people talk about DSLR cameras for travel and how great DSLR cameras are, only if you're willing to carry a lot of lenses and a lot of glass with you. And so people, they don't want to carry a lot so they just put one lens on it. And if it doesn't zoom, then it's really limiting because you can't zoom out and widen out. That's one of the things I love about the um, the Galaxy uh, Ultra phones is I love the four different cameras on it and the four different lenses. So while it's not um, like a continuous smooth zoom, maybe like the camcorder is, or the, the ZV-1 has that zoom lens on it that kind of like moves, it moves, it moves, it moves, 
You see that? that, right? It moves, it moves in and it moves out to zoom in and to zoom out on, on phones. They can't move in and they can't move out, but it's got four different ones. So it's got super wide angle, 1X, 3X, and 10X. The fancy iPhones have that too. Um, so if you do want to take a lot of photos, I'd encourage you on a phone to get one that has those different lenses. I probably use on the S22 Ultra, I use the wide angle lens and then I use the 3X telephoto lens on portrait mode the most. And the portrait kind of like blurs out the background like what would happen on a real good DSLR lens. Uh, oh, Matthew, thanks for joining in. Matthew says, I love the look of the new shirt. Yes, this is the new black yellow production shirt. Uh, and so this is uh, for those who win shirts on the live stream, they get one of these too. Matthew, thanks for, thanks for joining in. How, how are things, everything's treating you today? Uh, and uh, Rob says, when he cut off uh, Abe Lincoln's head, he retook the photo on their iPhone, so the day was saved. That is fantastic to hear the day was saved. Um, all right, yeah, but like related to, you know, fancy, fancy pants cameras. Uh, so, so let's talk about what I'm shooting this video on, and I, don't, I just turned the brightness down because I feel like my face was getting blown out a little bit with the lighting. I didn't make the picture look too dark. Um, so the fancy camera I'm shooting this on that I can't, I can't show you because it's right there. This is a Sony A7S III. I do my live streams on a Sony A7S III. It's a DSLR camera. Um, between the body and the lens is about $5,000 for this camera. Uh, in addition to using this for live streams, I use this in low light settings. If I'm, well, like when I do Christmas light videos, when I do videos at nighttime that are outside in low light, this camera is amazing. It's big. It's heavy, uh, so I don't I don't travel with this camera all that much because it's big and it's heavy. I take it for those special purpose things, and then I keep it here in the studio up on this tripod, um, and then I have an XLR attachment uh, because there's a um, there's a there's a there's a I'm I'm tapping on it. There's a microphone that's just right right right. Right, right up here, there's a microphone just right over my head that connects into this camera and zoomable lens. Uh, I am big on zoom lenses, so even this one that sits here in the studio from a fixed distance, I have a zoom lens on it so I can move uh, back and forth. Oh, and uh, Brian, thank you uh, very much uh, for supporting the families uh, for the Super Chat. I enabled Super Chat on the last live stream. It's still on for this live stream, so uh, I will pass that on to the victims of the church shooting uh, in Lake Forest here. So, Brian, thank you very much for your support. I appreciate it. Uh, John says, the A7S is my go-to cam for anything. It's a fantastic it's a fantastic camera. And if you're just going, going to do a commercial shoot, great, bring all the stuff with you because you're not uh, traveling around. And John says amazing for concerts. But I agree, it's an amazing camera. Like, and if, like if I'm going to just shoot something and it's something just to shoot because I'm just doing video and I'm not traveling around, I'm like in one place and that's what I'm doing, then it would be the A7S III. It's not as stabilized um, as this is though. Uh, and so that's the con. Like to then to really have it stabilized it has to be on a gimbal and uh, man, it's, it's just, it's just all that stuff. Um, Points Traveler says, is this shirt black or dark gray? Yes, it's black and dark gray. Uh, if you go on the Yellow Production shop, you can get a black version and a dark gray version. This is in fact the heathered gray one. I just, I happen to like the dark gray better than black. It kind of looks better on video. Black just, I don't know, I guess so much black stuff, it just soaks it in. So the gray one looks better. Uh, oh, Samurai says, I miss the Sony stores and shopping malls if Sony would cut down their price. I agree. I actually, um, I first bought my first one of these camcorders at a Sony store in San Diego at the Fashion Valley Mall. So it is a real bummer that their stores are no more. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so I've got a few more cameras uh, to show you. Um, this one right here. If I need to do a walking tour and I need to be really discreet, I use this camera. What is this camera? This camera uh, is the DJI, oh, and what's this? I'll get back to this in a second. This is the case and the microphone. But this right here, this is the DJI Osmo Pocket 2. And so you can see it's got a little um, screen right there. And then this right here is the camera. And if I click this three times, it flips it around. So now the camera's 
camera's looking at you, camera's looking at my screen, uh, and this it has a has a it's a gimbal on it. So this little joystick, we can we can turn it, and you can see that turns. It can go right, it can go up. This is nice and stabilized, and it's really small. So I've been places where they tell me, Chris, you can't. You can't use a gimbal. When I went to Omega Mart in Las Vegas, they said that I could not use the gimbal. Fine, I will use this. It's a gimbal built into the camera. And it's so small, people don't really even notice that it's a camera. The microphone on it stinks though. Um, so I have the pocket, that was in pocket one that I didn't use all that much because the audio was so bad, I'd have to record it um, externally on that Zoom audio recorder I showed you before, but the, Zoom Osmo Pocket 2 comes with what they call the Creator Kit that then comes with this, which is the external microphone. So then this is a wireless microphone that connects to, sure, whatever. And then the um, this thing, it's actually, mm, can I take this off? Well, yeah, it does come off. I just haven't taken it off in a while. Uh, okay, well, I'm not going to do it right now. Uh, but this bottom handle right here, this is actually the receiver and a little bit of an extra battery for the Osmo Pocket that then works with the microphone. So it's actually a lot smaller if you don't need the wireless microphone. It gets a little bit bigger if you use the wireless microphone. Uh, people ask about prices. I think this one's about 450 something like that. Um, but it's paid off in situations where I can't use the other gear. And then uh, what's also neat, you can you can connect it to your phone and then see the screen on your phone big if you want to. And then in here, it also has a wide angle lens attachment that just magnetically clips on to the front of it. So now it has a wide angle lens. So when I do the hotel reviews or things like that, I put the wide angle attachment on it so that you can see a lot more. And then it just goes in that case. DJI has really made this easy to use, small, it's all portable, all the stuff fits together. There's no other bags. Um, and so I really, I really, I really dig this as well. Um, now I will say this microphone is not as good as the Rode Wireless Go 2. Uh, I don't know why, like there's, there's this mic and then there's the DJI mic, like why the DJI mic couldn't just work with this. I don't know, but probably different product divisions at DJI that did that. Uh, and uh, John says that uh, is awesome as a uh, body POV cam placement. Sure, you could just you could just put it right there and then you got like a gimbal, eye, gimbal stabilized thing. You could put it on a helmet um, for sure. Uh, oh, and Eric B. Uh, also offers uh, some support. Thank you, Eric B, for your support. I appreciate it uh, for the victims of the church shooting. And Eric B says, I find if you don't invest at least $1,200 into your camera, you get better quality using a top-notch smartphone. I think that's about reasonable. I mean, $1,200, 1000 something like that um, is certainly about that about that price range. Uh, Kathy says, good things come in small packages just like me. Ha, ha, ha. Um, yeah, and Point Traveler says, uh, does the... Pocket 2 shoot in 4K. Yes, it shoots in 4K. If, so if you want to see a video that I shot with this, uh, just check out the Omega Mart walking tour that was shot with this. Also, the um, Resorts World Las Vegas walking tour I shot with the Osmo Pocket 2. Okay. Other camera that's in this category of small cameras, action cams, is the GoPro. Uh, this is the GoPro... Hero 10 Black, um, which, what do I use this for? I use this when I need to mount the camera to weird places. Like if I'm doing a slide and I need to mount it to my head. You know, I get like a, like a head strap and a mount for it. Cause you know, all the GoPro little built in things, you can mount things on it. The number one thing uh, I've been using this for is driving scenes. So I got the, this is the GoPro car suction cup mount and you can just suction cup this onto the roof of your car or the windshield and then mount the GoPro on it and do a hyperlapse and it makes a really good driving scenes. I also will use the GoPro if I'm doing anything in really wet situations underwater, it works well. Um, I don't use it for vlogging because I don't think it has the best camera 
and the microphone on it is garbage, so uh, not very good for picking up audio. So people often ask me, Chris, what do you think? Uh, is the GoPro good for vlogging? My answer is no. The GoPro is really good for picking up action shots, moving shots, uh, things that you need to mount it in a bizarre place, but not as a vlogging camera to record you or to record talking. Get one of these other things. Um, Oh, I see uh, Norma uh, has offered $20. Norma, thank you very much uh, for your support uh, for the uh, victims of the church shooting as well. I appreciate it. Chris says, what's the quality video of the pocket cam? Yeah, 4K. Um, I don't know if it's 30 or 60 frames per second, but it's pretty good. I like it. Um, I think the quality of this video is comparable to the quality of the video that comes out of the S22 Ultra at 4K. The onboard mics, on, frankly, on this are lousy, and the onboard mics on the phones are, frankly, lousy, too. <clears throat> Been my experience. Okay, last, whoop, last camera right here in this bag. This is the DJI Mavic Mini 2, which is a very small drone. Um, and I like this drone because this is how big the drone is. It's very small. But Chris, you got to travel with this whole bag. I can take it out of the bag. Here's the drone. And then there's a remote controller for it that the phone goes on to. And then there is, uh, this is the Fly More kit. This comes with three batteries and then a charging case that charges all three batteries. If you're considering getting the one of the DJI drones, I'd highly encourage you to get the Fly More kit that has more batteries and this charging house for it because the batteries only last like 20 or 30 minutes. They don't last very long. And so if you're gonna do a flight or two, um, you wanna make sure you have a few extra batteries. And Booba says, uh, any of your Vegas documenting is awesome via any lens because it's Vegas after. Oh, thanks for that, Booba MDL. I appreciate it. I just try, you know, I figure there's a lot of people that can go out there with um, something. My goal is to try to get better video and better audio. So if you're choosing a video to watch, you watch mine because maybe it looks and sounds a little bit better. Uh, but Matthew says there's no perfect camera. Get what works best for you. I agree, Matthew. Um, and that's why at least I've got all these different things because they're all good or better for different situations where another one isn't. I've got one last thing to show and then we'll do some open Q&A. Uh, my last thing to show is this right here. When I'm shooting shorts, I've done some like news shorts, I use this little thing right here. Um, what is this little thing? This is, a, this is a microphone stand. This is just a little flexible arm. This is a Joby uh, cell phone mount, so I, Where's one of my phones? I've got all the phones. I've got all the phones in things, so I don't have enough hands to take it out. But the phone would just mount right in here, and then this is the Rode uh, Video Mic NTG USB. This is like a substantial microphone. But if I'm gonna go out to the beach, I'm gonna go outside. This thing uh, is like epically good directional audio. This huge fluffy thing cuts out all the wind and so you just hear me. This way I don't need a wireless mic. I can talk to it like this. It like it it looks it looks kind of goofy, right? It looks kind of goofy, but it sounds good and so if you don't mind looking a little goofy, yeah, there you go. If you're looking for like the best microphone to put on your phone, that isn't a wireless microphone because you, you just can't do that and you want to mic up, then I would recommend you get the Rode VideoMic NTG USB. It just connects in via USB and it charges via USB too. Um, and it it does have battery, so you do have to charge it. You got to actually turn it on. You see it has a little green light there. That's the thing. Whenever you have an external mic, you have to remember to turn it on, which that's the saddest day for any vlogger when you forget to turn your microphone on. Well. Fellow explorers, oh, I got one more thing to show you. It's not the end of all the things to show you. Uh, and what do I travel with to edit all the stuff on? Because I saw a few questions. So when I travel, uh, I take this MacBook Pro. This is the newest MacBook Pros uh, that have SD card slots so that I can take the cards out of all these cameras and just download it right to here. I also travel with an external hard drive over here. Uh, this is the... SanDisk 
two terabyte extreme portable SSD. What I like about these is they have a USB-C connector and then they've got this little adapter that comes with it to make it a USB-A connector too. So I can plug it into my MacBook or I can plug it into something else. If it doesn't have USB-C, it makes it super convenient. It's an SSD, it's super fast. So every day when I travel, I take things from my cameras, phones, put them on the computer and then from the computer, I put them on the hard drive. If I'm on the road and editing, I use Final Cut Pro to edit. When I'm here in the home studio, I use Magic's Vegas or Adobe Premiere. Fellow explorers, it is now Q&A time. If you've got a question, I've got an answer. All right, fellow explorers, if you asked a question and I didn't answer it before, go ahead and ask it again. Or if you got a new question, go ahead and ask away. Put a question mark on it so I see your question. We'll take a few questions and then um, we'll do a giveaway for a new black yellow production shirt. Point Traveler says, how much DJI stock do you own? None. I own no DJI stock. I, I think I, I've definitely actually spent more money in Sony gear than I have on DJI gear. It might just seem like I've got more DJI things, um, but if you were picking one, I pick Sony. Eric says, I forgot to turn my mic on before. Uh, Frederick says, hey, I just found your channel. What's the deal with the pandas? I got a whole video about frequently asked questions on the pandas, uh, but briefly, I am Chris. He is Topher. Together we make Christopher. He's like my panda as a brother. Um, the original Topher, I had one. He was stolen in London. Uh, and so the fellow explorers here, many of them on the live stream, uh, sent me replacements for Topher. And so that's why we have this whole Yellow Productions crew now of all these pandas that have joined the family. So there you go. Uh, right, thanks Stanford Bridge for asking your question again. Do you ever feel the camera gets in the way of a direct unfiltered experience? in the way, uh, maybe. Uh, certainly, if I'm um, creating video at the same time as experiencing it, it, it it's definitely, uh, I have to do both, right? So often when we go places, I will walk through a place first without the camera. I'll walk through and experience it, and then we'll come back a second time to actually record the content. So that way I can experience it and record the content. But then that means all of the stuff that we do in travel takes twice as long, um, but that's the general experience. Uh, Michael says, I find phone screens very hard to see in direct sunlight. How do you get around that? I, you don't get around that with phone screens, really. Um, but that's why I say like on a, uh, you know, camcorders like this or professional cameras, they'll all have the, um, things that you can see, like you can stick your eye up to this or um, the Sony a7S III has a viewfinder too. So uh, there's no good way to get around your phone being hard to see in, in daylight. That's just the problem with screens other than like putting a hood around it or over it, which you could do, but you're probably not gonna do that if you have a phone. Uh, Samurai says, I forgot to get my daughter Panda from Japan, but I got her Gizmo the Gremlin instead. I'm sure Gizmo the Gremlin is just as cute as the Panda. Uh, Brandon says, on one trip, how much space you go through on that external hard drive? It depends on how long the trip is, um, but I would say, uh, so that's a two terabyte hard drive. You know, if I'm out for a couple weeks, I can easily shoot uh, a, a terabyte of content. Um, and and that's, that's shooting in the more compressed 4K modes. I don't shoot, like on this A7S III, you can shoot in some really like, epically high res stuff, which I, I don't do because I just don't, I don't have enough space for it. James says, equipment is only good as the person using it and you are definitely a pro uh, at using it. Thank you, James. I appreciate it. Uh, just a lot of practice. Um, <clears throat> Jay says, uh, does anyone like DaVinci Resolve for editing? Um, I have tried it, but I find it difficult. So, um, I just haven't, I haven't gotten into the swing of things on it. Uh, Norma, thank you very much for your uh, second offering for the Taiwanese Presbyterian Church. Uh, I appreciate it. Yeah, and Point Traveler says, uh, related to looking silly with any of these things, you just have to own it despite how goofy you look. Indeed, own it and just know that, at least in my case, I'm, I'm doing it for a reason. Um, Brandon says, love any camera shots with a drone, or good ones at least, maybe. Maybe not any, but good ones. Um, Okay. Uh, Samurai says, Chris, I've seen a video of a place in LA where the Rockford uh, Files trailer was filmed. It has a nice restaurant. I can't remember. I, 
I have not. I'm not familiar with the Rockford Files, so I don't know where that was. Uh, Frederick says, uh, what's the one place you would like to travel to but haven't gotten there yet? Iceland. I'd like to go to Iceland. I'd like to go to Finland. I haven't been to those places. Uh, Gareth says, for the screens, you can buy special screen protectors that reduce glare. And there's a store for Germany that has a tons of options online. Thank you uh, for that tip, Gareth. I appreciate it. Yes, it's the time you've been waiting for. It's time for the giveaway. All right, fellow explorers, it is time for the giveaway. And to give away, uh, to win the giveaway, you need to answer my question correctly. And uh, to answer my question correctly, today I showed off a few camera bags. I showed off this one. I showed off this is the PackSafe LS250, the 250, the 150. But I've got them in another color too. What other color do I have this bag in? If you can answer that question, you will win a black yellow productions crew shirt and the answer is not black because i showed you the black what is the other color of the pack safe bag that i have and if you don't get to win one uh, you can pick one up over at the yellow production shop at shop.yellow-productions.com and if you wonder chris when's the next live stream because you want to tune in when it's live we'll head over to update.yellow-productions.com and join in for my mailing list and you will get an email two days before I go live, telling you the time, the day, and the topic, so you know whether you want to join or not. And now we have a winner, winner, chicken dinner. Congratulations to Chris Cole. He said it correctly. Indeed, the color of the other pack safe bag I have is beige. I would have accepted khaki as well as the color, but beige, tan, those things all work well. So Chris, congratulations, you win a new black yellow production shirt. Go ahead and send me an email to chris at yellow-productions.com. You'll find that in the description. Let me know what size you want in your address and I'll get the shirt heading right over to you. Well, fellow explorers, hope you enjoyed this. Now you know all the gear that I use this year. You know what, next year I'll probably be using different gear so you can look forward to an update of this video in 2023 as I buy new things, test new things, and find some new favorites. But here in the summer 2022, this is it. Uh, Barry has one last question, which do I still use the GoPro Fusion? That's a 360 camera. I've not used it for a couple of years. I just find people don't consume the 360 videos all that much. So that one is on um, indefinite hiatus. Well, fellow explorers, as usual, I won't say goodbye because I'll see you in the next video, which in the archive, I'll put my review of this bag right here on the screen.